Welcome back to the show. Today we have Cam Kashani. She's known as the godmother of Silicon Beach and the co-founder and CEO of CoExcel. Cam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to have you on the show. You've done a crazy amount of stuff and you continue to do a crazy <laughs> amount of stuff. But maybe before we get into all that, let's get to know you a little bit better and uh, start off with where you grew up. Yeah, I was born in Iran, actually, um, oh, cool. and moved when I was one. We basically ran okay. away from the war. It was, it was during enough. the height of the war <laughs> when I was born. And so we moved here, and I've been in L.A. since I was six years old. But initially, I was on the East Coast for a few years. Okay, very cool. So you went to university. What did you take and why? Well, I went to undergrad and grad school, and okay. for both of them, I majored in entrepreneurship and marketing. Okay. Um, the why, well, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> for undergrad, yeah. um, I was really intrigued by the world of marketing. I always really appreciated psychology, which actually makes a lot of sense now that I'm a coach. Sure. Um, and so I just felt like it came easy to me. And um, entrepreneurship, because there was a part of me, even though back then I honestly didn't really believe in myself, but there was a part of me that knew that I couldn't work for anybody. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. What made you get that feeling? Is, was there like a defining moment or moments in your life or, or what made you feel like that? There wasn't necessarily a defining moment, but it was like a knowing. Okay. It's, it's, it's not something I can be like, well, this happened. And therefore okay. I was like, so I'm going to be an entrepreneur. It was, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was an, it was a deeper knowing within me. Like I knew it's, and I didn't know when I didn't know how, but okay. I just knew. Okay. So you get out of university, walk me through your career because you you ended up going back to school but you've done a ton mm -hmm. of stuff so walk us through your journey um maybe cover some hi career highlights and some failures along the way up until what you're doing today all right you got some time yeah i love it let's go <laughs> all right well after college i ended up getting the one and only real job that i ever had okay sure <laughs> where I was a director of marketing for a medical diagnostics corporation. Okay. And I was there for four years and I did help them significantly during the four years I was there. Um, I brought in what I call a human element into the equation. When I got there, everything was operating at a very robotic level. There was a lot of negativity in the office. There was a lot of people talking behind one another's backs and, People were just unhappy. Morale was low. And I knew myself, even though I was only 22 or 23, I knew that if I was going to be in that environment, my soul would die. Sure. So I ended enough. up having a conversation with the CEO of the company. And um, I told him, you know, I think that people don't realize why they're here. They're not realizing that they're in the business of patient care. They think they're just here for you know, a paycheck or whatever might be going through their minds. And he was actually really receptive to the conversation, ended up holding a meeting and asking the 60 something employees in the office, like, why do you guys think you're here? And nobody could answer the question. And everyone did say, oh, because we have to hit a certain number of studies every month because I have to pay my rent, you know, like all of these generic responses. And so in that moment, I was able to help them implement this other kind of way of being within the company. And it ended up really making a big difference. Over four years, we went from three locations to nine wow. and um, increasing profits 60%. And well, they good. ended up getting acquired. Yeah, Very cool. they ended up getting acquired two years after I left. So but the reason I left was because I craved that autonomy. Right. So this is when that moment hit me like I need to not work for somebody else anymore. Okay. And I had a great idea too. It was a document delivery portal between physicians and service providers to communicate through the cloud in a HIPAA compliant fashion. So in a in layman's terms, it's basically electronic medical records before they existed, but only focusing on the on the on the back end, like between the physician and the service provider. Got you. 
So it was a, a good idea, but way ahead of its time, and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Happens. Happens. Yeah, fair enough. Yes, it does. It does. And it was during the Great Recession. This was in 2008. So oh, okay. it was bad timing and, you know, lack of resources and lack of know-how. And so that ended up becoming a huge failure. And um, it was two years of our time, $200,000 of our own money. I mean, I didn't even know what an investor was. I was so clueless about everything. And we ended up with only three customers. Okay. So, yeah, no, but okay. Keep going on on your journey. So what did you do after that? (laughs) So that was the moment where this is towards the end of 2009 now. And still in the economic recession, still a bad time in the economy. This is when I am getting my MBA now. So I'm in graduate school. Okay. And I'm looking for a job because this startup we had just completely tanked and I couldn't find anything. There was nothing. It was literally like the one thing I could find was secretarial jobs that were making like 30 grand a year. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm getting my MBA. This just doesn't make sense. I don't, that's not what I'm going to do. Sure. And so in that moment of scarcity spawned creativity. And that's where, I did, where the idea for the next company came along, which was called Coloft. Okay. And Coloft was the first co-working space in Los Angeles. Wow. You were very early um, on in the Coloft yeah. space. Or the, the co-working space, sorry. <laughs> the co-working space. Yeah. Yeah, this was before we worked. This yeah. was before any of these guys existed. It was such a new... Thing. So how did you come up um, but, with the idea, you know, though? Well, it was a combination of things. And most of all, as most entrepreneurs say, it was out of need. Okay. So the first, uh, the first startup having failed the way that it did, I believe that a huge reason we failed so hard was a lack of community and lack of resources. And when I say resources, I don't just mean money. I mean, like, all the possible resources, advisors, and, you know, all of these different things that you need to have in order to build a successful company so the premise behind the thought was why isn't there a place for people like us an aa for entrepreneurs so to say (laughs) we're a different breed (laughs) yes we are (laughs) right yeah they're gonna be we're just different there's a startup idea hey we meet every thursday Like, hi, I'm Cam. I'm an yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. I failed these many times doing these things. I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah. Can anybody help me with these 10 things? <laughs> I'm addicted to the high. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Wow. That's that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So that, that, was, that was where the uh, concept kind of came to mind. And so... Um, what we decided to do was do the lean startup before the lean startup was a thing. There was okay. no book called the lean startup yet, but sure. we failed from our previous failure. We learned how to build quickly and efficiently and make sure that there's validation and all of that. So we put up a website before Coloft existed, Coloft coming spring of 2010 when it wasn't. And okay. <laughs> I had no ties to the community down here. There was literally no technology scene in Los Angeles. And now we're like number three in the world in terms sure. of startup growth. It's crazy. Um, but back then there was literally just one event every two months with the same 90 people. And I was not involved in that circle at all. So I just hustled and sent it to all my friends and family. Like, Hey guys, send this to as many people as you possibly can. Let them know we're opening. And we ended up actually getting about 250 emails in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one positive step. And with those emails, we decided to survey them. Okay. Um, and from those surveys, one of the biggest questions that we asked was, if Coloft was open today, would you become a member and would you pay X amount? And we got about 28% of people that said yes. Very cool. And so that's the moment that we decided to take the plunge. And so concept to creation took three months. We okay. launched Coloft early 2010. Within four months, we break even. And it ended up becoming the ground zero for LA Tech as we know it. It ended up becoming like such a big staple in history. It's crazy. It started a movement and 
That's amazing, uh, though. We had, I know, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> totally not intentional, but awesome how it works out that way, right? Sure. So I- um, I'm curious, though, did you guys, you like, how did you have the money to actually rent space early on? Or did you leverage some of the money from people that were willing to pay? Or how did that kind of come to be? Well, we had we had some money from before we had we had a small amount of money left and i borrowed some from family okay okay no that makes yeah. sense yeah okay. yeah 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 so it, that's that's basically what it came down to and you know it was one of those please please believe in us <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we just this we just work, had this failure company but give us more money i love that no that's great though but but i think that's like the point i'm trying to make here is you're known as the godmother of Silicon Beach because uh, because you didn't give up on this, right? Walk us yeah. through that journey and how you became known as the godmother of Silicon Beach. Well, that name came from Koloft. So Koloft ended up having over 1,800 alumni during the four years that I wow. was there. And those alumni included Uber LA, Instacart, ZipRecruiter, the early Tinder team. It was really like... Even Pando Daily did this article, and they called it the cheers of the LA tech ecosystem. Very cool. It was it was the place to be, and uh, people just started calling me that. And at first, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. And then I was really? like, Actually, this is kind of cool. <laughs> well, so, what was it? Just uncomfortable, or, or what? Well, how come you didn't really like it early on? I don't know. I think I was a little bit timid back then. I'm not anymore. I can't give a <laughs> <f> now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at, at least you're honest. <laughs> this is true. No, that's good though. Okay. So So is Koloft for people that haven't heard of it still around or 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 what's what No, so this is this is the interesting part of the story. So, so uh Koloft um is no longer around okay. and there's a few reasons for that but the biggest one being so my co-founder throughout this story was my ex-husband got you and so when i when i filed for divorce it just erupted this big thing and so i ended up losing co-op in my divorce and it was a very difficult moment for sure. me and one I speak about very openly because I think it's really important for people to understand the power of perseverance and resilience and not allowing failures and losses to define you. Sure. Because this was a moment where I literally went from like, oh my God, I love my company and this is great and everything's good. And, you know, a week later, I'm not, I'm no longer who I had identified myself as. I was yeah. that guy's wife for 12 years. I was Koloff's Cam and all of that was gone. And it was this moment where I'm like naked in the universe with twin boys. They were barely one and a half wow. as, a, as a mom. And I just felt so scared. I didn't know what to do. You know, sure. I felt really scared and I had a total identity crisis and it ended up becoming the best possible thing that could have happened to me because that moment catapulted me on my awakening and me just building myself up learning who I truly am at a core at the core not allowing anything outside of me to define me I define all of it like a lot of people especially entrepreneurs develop such severe attachments to their product that sure. they think that without the product they are nobody <laughs> when in reality you are the product Interesting. And you are an infinite possibility. That's really good and advice. So, yeah. And the more powerful and equipped you are as a human being, the more successful you will be as a natural result. So my advice to entrepreneurs is always to build yourself and equip yourself. You're the product. And that's what I did. I was forced into it in a way, but like it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened. And um, I started doing a lot of self-development, personal development, and different books and seminars. I met the woman who is now my business partner, and she was my coach during that period of time. Okay, so how did you guys meet, through... just out of curiosity? Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, not at all. It was through a family friend. It was super okay. random. Okay. <laughs> just like it seems to always be kind of random. 
Yeah, totally. I mean, I really thought nothing of it. A family friend was like, here, you should call this woman. She's incredible. And I'm thinking like, I really have nothing to lose right now. Cause I got, I, I connected with her probably like a week before I filed for divorce and it was just wow. a really dark time. And she had come so highly regarded and she's this incredible intuitive coach. And I was like, okay, well, let me give it a shot. And that first phone call with her just changed my life in so many ways. That's awesome. And yeah, I'm so grateful for her. Like she was, she was a big guiding light during that entire part of my life. And she helped build me back up at such an accelerated speed that I literally went from being depressed in my bed to nine months later, I'm working with the state department. I'm in Kuwait. Wow. Sitting across from the U.S. ambassador and like telling him what to do. It was, oh, oh, <laughs> it was okay. so surreal. Okay, well, <laughs> let's step back for a second. So how did that come to be? And, and what did you do for the State Department? So that was an interesting story. I literally got a phone call one day from this woman telling me that she's calling on behalf of the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait and the U.S. State Department and I'm like did I do something like what is going on why are they calling me and, she, and she's like I got your name from quite a few different people and we have this incredible program here that's proven to ward off terrorism by building uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems overseas and empowering the women and the youth to build entrepreneurial projects we'd wow. like to invite you to be a speaker down here yeah that must have been really amazing, uh, actually. You have no idea. It was a life-changing moment for me. Um, that trip was definitely a trip of a freaking lifetime. <laughs> sure. No, fair <laughs> enough. So so you go over there. What types of stuff did you talk about? Various things, depending on the venue I was at. So okay. they had me do uh, television segments, wow. radio segments, um, I spoke at the universities. I was the guest of honor at the U.S. ambassador's um, home wow. where he had like a round table lunch. And uh, I was able to offer advice to major decision makers in Kuwait, which was incredible. Sure. Um, yeah. So it was, a, it was a myriad of things from helping them to build the ecosystem and, and different types of things I learned with Koloff in regard to building community to individual empowerment. When I sat one-on-one -on -one with the Kuwaitis over there and I was giving them advice in terms of becoming an entrepreneur. Very cool. Okay. Walk me through what exactly is CoExcel and how did it come to be? Yeah. So CoExcel is my third company now. Okay. And it came to be, and then this is why I say Kuwait was such a powerful moment for me. In that moment in Kuwait, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, where was I just a year ago and where am I now, and mentally sure. speaking? Like, sure. I had just come such an incredibly long way. And I realized that the only person holding me back in this entire journey of life has been myself. Interesting. And... I really wanted to help other people get out of their own way and realize what they're truly capable of because we can get so embedded in our minds. We don't even have an awareness as to what we are truly doing. And it ends up holding us back. We end up having, you know, doing self-sabotage. We end up having imposter syndrome. We end up having so many different things that can show up and, you know, just not living a happy life is what I see most frequently, especially amongst entrepreneurs. It's like, once I get my company here, I'll be happy. No, you'll never be happy. You're always going to be chasing a fucking dream. You got to be happy now if you want to truly find that fulfillment within yourself. And so that's kind of when the concept of CoExcel came into my mind. Like the initial idea was there's all these accelerators out there that are building people that are building products. Why aren't there any building people? Interesting. And so it's called, yeah, it's called CoExcel, the human accelerator for that reason. And what it is, is a three month program where it's one-on-one -on -one, highly customized and it's the most powerful and innovative method of coaching out there because it incorporates 
not just business coaching, which is what you predominantly see out there, but it's business coaching, transformational coaching, which is what really helps you identify and remove any types of limiting beliefs that you are not aware of and is not in your awareness. We help bring it to your awareness and we help reprogram, reprogram them. In addition to um, intuitive coaching and mindset coaching. So we're really bringing all components of coaching together into one powerful three-month program. And we've been doing this now for almost three years, which wow. is crazy. That's great. <laughs> yeah, Congrats. it's been almost three years. Thank you. And it's it's really going great. And me and my business partner, we're the, we're the two coaches. I'm okay. the mindset transformational coach, and she's the intuitive transformational coach. And Together, we just make a really great complimentary team, and the stories that have come out have been phenomenal. We've really helped people transform their lives, build their businesses, scale their businesses. Whatever they want is what we help them achieve. Got you. Very cool. So walk us through a bit of your process without maybe giving away kind of what you guys do, but talk us through how does it kind of work and how do you decide who you take on for three months because it's got to be a little bit ch of or challenging to pick people sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Coaching is a very intimate relationship. And I always warn people that if you have a coach who's trying to sell you run. Interesting. <laughs> is, yeah. You don't want that. You want a coach who's really going to take the time up front to understand you and your needs and to see if there's if there's a fit if there's alignment right. there should be no selling involved it should be a natural process so what we do we work by invite and referral only okay and so what happens is initially if there's somebody who gets referred for example um i have a con i set up a time to meet with them have a conversation with them and really get to understand their world and what they're doing. And in that conversation, whether they're aware of it or not, I'm coaching them. And so I'm able to tell, is this person coachable? Number one, is this person, is there a fit here in terms of my coaching and the way they are? Because sometimes there just isn't, and that's okay. I'm just not the right coach for that person. Sure. Um, and, you know, assuming there's a fit, then we both want to move forward. Then they, we start off with a, um, assessment okay. and really get to get at a deeper level. Like what is it that they want to accomplish or gain for themselves over the next three months and learn about their fears, their weaknesses, strengths, all of that stuff. And we take it from there. Very cool. So I'm curious, yeah. I'm curious though. What types of stuff do you guys find the most beneficial or stuff that you see all the time that you really have to help people through? You kind of mentioned at the beginning, but I, I think it's really important to cover that. Well, what the common patterns that come out are most related to a sense of I'm not worthy or I don't deserve it. Okay. And it's running at such a a deep level that they're just not even aware of it. Because if you ask the person, do you believe you deserve it? They'll go, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But then as you do, as you do more work with them, they're like, oh, sh wait, no, you maybe you're right. Because I am sabotaging myself here. And I, and I am not, I am experiencing imposter syndrome there. Right. These are these these two are like the side effects of the core problem, which is the the story, I like to call it, because it's not real. The story of I'm not worthy and I don't deserve it, which is just something deeply embedded in a lot of different humans. And it comes from various experiences throughout their life. So I can identify that really quickly just because I've been doing this for a very long time. Sure. And um I, I, I bring it up to them in a, in a, you know, gentle slash in your face way. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so <they're>, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not completely thrown off, but they're also like, I'm, I'm honest. I'm going to tell them like, this is actually what's going on. And they go and they have that moment. And I'm like, so you have a choice right now. You either get to keep operating that way or we get to do the work to fix it and reprogram it and make you really experience life the way you were meant to experience life. No, and when that awareness usually comes into the into their consciousness, they're like, they don't want to do that anymore. Like, why well, live life that way, right? Sure. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that that would probably be the most common 
thing that shows up and it's, it's common in men and in women. Sure. I could see that for sure. So I'm curious Mm -hmm. though, you mentioned something that's interesting. Um, the self-sabotage thing, it seems to Mm -hmm. me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that it's almost like the busier you are and the more things you need to do, it's it's almost like you're not even juggling the balls anymore. You've dropped all the balls and you need to figure out which ones to pick back up. But you're almost – you don't even know where to begin or which balls to start picking back up. Do you agree with that or or, or what are your thoughts on that? That happens. That's definitely <laughs> one component of things. And, you know, on, on on the same note, like they're doing that to keep themselves busy from addressing the real problem, which is themselves. Interesting. They so, want to, yeah, they want to stay busy and like keep their minds busy so as not to look within because it's not easy to look within. It takes a lot of courage. Sure. So how do you get people to let you guys in? Because that's got to be, sometimes they don't even tell their closest family members or friends some of the stuff that you guys probably hear from people. Absolutely. And that's why the work we do is highly confidential. Yeah, fair enough. (laughs) Nobody will ever know any of it. Yeah. Um, But, you know, to be honest with you, they have to be ready. Okay. Right. So if I have somebody sitting in my office that I'm talking to who just doesn't want to share anything, I just tell them, you know what, you're just not ready for this. This isn't for you. When you want to authentically share and tell me what your deepest dreams are, what your darkest secrets are, like what are all those things that have led you to where you are now, that's when you're ready. When you're really done with life being as it is and you're ready to take it to the next level and you're willing to do anything to make that happen, that's when you're ready. So it takes a, it takes a certain place for a person to get to. Like had I not been in the position that I was in, I don't know how receptive I would have been to coaching. And that doesn't mean you have to be experiencing a crisis to be ready for coaching. In fact, I highly encourage people to get coaching way before any type of crisis shows up so that you're able to have the tools to respond to a crisis potentially. Um, but you do have to just be in a, in a headspace of I surrender to the universe and I realize that I don't know everything and I need help and I want to take myself to another level and experience the beauty that life has to offer. Sure. No, I I think that makes a lot of sense. You keep talking about working with people, but I'm curious to dive a little bit deeper into are the outcomes that people come to you guys with always different or is the, do people come with certain outcomes or, or how does that kind of work? It, it varies. Okay. Um, you know, it depends. Like initially, for example, we were only working with entrepreneurs and now we've, we've expanded beyond that. It's really anybody who's ready to take their life to the next level. But, you know, in the beginning when it was just entrepreneurs and with the entrepreneurs we do work with, a big part of it is you know, launching my company, raising money, um, scaling my company, handling employees, becoming a better leader. Like those are things that have shown up a lot. Okay. And in addition to that, you know, on the inner work side, what has been very common is I want to release the doubts and the fears that I have because the amount of self-doubt that's out there is astonishing. People really experience such a high level of self-doubt and founders, leaders, they are no exception to this. So we really help them identify at a deeper level with the truth of who they are, help them build trust with themselves, help them love themselves, help them accept themselves and release the doubts and the fears that are showing up. Yeah, no, it, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think the, the trick is, and, and what do you see as the common rationale behind some of that? Because I, you're right. I, I know lots of people that are astronomically successful and, probably mm-hmm. more successful than most people will ever be. And they still feel like they have no idea what they're doing. They're a fraud that they're going to get found out. And they've maybe sold three companies and they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And they still feel the same emotions that people that just started their business yesterday feel, right? So how do mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. work with people to actually overcome that? Because I think that's something that I see a lot of, a lot of time talking to people, even on the show. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to be honest, it's a very individual thing. Okay. 
it really it requires us to sit with them and understand their story what they've gone through in their life what experiences okay. have led up to where they are this usually has a lot to do with parents okay. it has a lot to do with various you know mentors and whatnot while you're growing up it could just be one or two defining experiences where you just felt like you know, it resulted in you making this decision. So what happens with a human being is when you experience something as a child or as a grown up, you, um, you create, you make certain decisions based on that experience. So for example, I'll just use myself. When sure. my brother was born at the age of four, okay. I decided that that meant that I wasn't enough. I, uh, okay. That's not true. Sure. sure. <laughs> right? It's yeah. not true at all. But this is this is what happens. This is what people do. You know, there are these these small things that show up that are small when you look at it from a bird's eye view. But in the world of a four year old, why is there another fucking human here? Was I not enough for you guys? And yeah, so I ended up having that story for a very long time until I did the work. And a lot of women in particular have this story of I'm not enough. So that's a big one that we work with for sure. But that's, that's kind of what I mean when I say we make certain decisions based on certain experiences and you don't have to be a child for that to happen. If an entrepreneur fails at their, at their product for the first time, yeah. they could make the decision that I am a failure. Right. But yeah. that's not true. <laughs> no, fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how the, the evolution of the thought process shows up and so we have to do the work to really dissect and see what's going on and help them reframe it all makes a lot of sense so when you guys are working with people do you do in-person stuff do you do video chat mm -hmm. a bit of both do they have to be located yeah. in your guys area or how does that kind of work no we have clients globally so it's it's a mix of all of the above if they're around and in the area and i'm in santa monica you know sure. we'd love to do it in person if they aren't video chat phone call technology is a great help in this <laughs> yeah sure makes sense so I, mm -hmm. I, i'm curious where do you guys kind of take this from here are you guys just planning to keep doing what you're doing do you have expansion plans you're going to move into other things as well or, or where what's the future hold for you guys you know we have a lot of fun thoughts and there's definitely a direction and a vision in which we're going and i want this to be a big thing this is not going to be a small coaching business this is going to be a big global company and um i'm also taking my time in re in regard to that happening i don't want i've learned that when you push anything it just doesn't work you need to trust in the divine timing of the process and so as long as i'm showing up every day and doing my thing i know that the bigger pieces are coming into play as well and the right things show up at the right time there's this beautiful synchronicity happens okay. that, that happens when you're in alignment um and so yes there is plans for it becoming awesome and big <laughs> okay sure and i don't want to really go into the details sure. of what that looks like yet okay um but yeah yeah it'll happen so i'm curious though how do you just accept that and and trust that things will work out because i think that's really scary for some people to accept but it, obviously you've accepted it yeah, and that's a beautiful question you asked, because that shows you what is possible when you truly trust yourself. When you've done enough work and you get to a place, and when I say work, I mean inner work on yourself, okay. the work on yourself, the personal development work, you get to a place where you finally trust yourself. And when you trust yourself, you trust the process and you trust the universe, because everything is a projection. Everything is a projection. So if I'm experiencing any trust out there, okay. it means that I'm experiencing trust and mistrust in here. Outer experience is a reflection of inner reality. Interesting. So for somebody, yeah, that's a really powerful statement. Yeah. And if people really, really understood the depth of that, they would get, you know, so much of why things, certain things keep occurring, certain failures keep happening or certain you know, situations keep repeating themselves. When you see that happening, you got to turn inside and see, well, what's, what's missing in here? So 
it really just comes down to you believing in yourself at an unwavering level, you loving yourself at an unwavering level, you trusting yourself and your abilities and knowing that you will take the right steps at the right time. And as a result, everything just shows up. It doesn't have to be so hard. It can have a form of effortlessness involved. Yeah, that's actually really good advice because I, I, I think it, it's hard because a lot of people don't have close family and friends that are entrepreneurs or running their own business that they can have honest conversations with about the highs and lows and what they're struggling with because it seems to me anyway that even in my immediate friend group, that most people aren't willing to talk about when they're going through a hard time. It's always trying to put on things are great. Everything's awesome. We're growing mm -hmm. like crazy. Right. And just being able mm -hmm. to kind of let your guard down and, and even have honest conversations with your friends and family. I, I've seen it. Cause you can kind of tell, right? Like, and I'm sure you could see this. You can tell that somebody's struggling with something, but they put on a face that they're not, right? Yeah. And it's always yeah. quite fascinating where you don't even necessarily have to pry, but you can get sometimes somebody one-on-one -on -one and they just like dump it on you and you, you uh -huh. can kind of help them through it, but they would never say that in front of maybe a handful of other people around, but maybe it's just like one-on-one, -on -one, right? And that always kind of fascinated me why people won't talk about the good and bad of what they're going through. And you might, you guys must deal with that all the time. And so how do yeah. you, you work with people to get them to open up a bit more, not only to you guys, but to the people around them so they can actually potentially help them because these big companies or even small companies, they won't even tell their co-founders sometimes they're struggling with stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, you bring up a very good point. There's a few sides to this. Initially, what comes forward for me is it's really important to acknowledge that we live in a society where it's frowned upon yeah, to be human. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good way of putting you it, know? right? Yeah. Seriously, like we're all human. We all experience it, experience ups and downs, we all experience wins and losses, we all have emotions and feelings. Why is this bad? Yeah. Why can't people just be themselves? And so I think it's really important, which is why I speak so openly about failure. It's like, dude, life sucks sometimes for mm -hmm. everybody. Even the ones that look like they're crushing it on a daily basis, they're not. It's just, you know, we have this social media shit out there that makes it look like yeah. Oh, look at me. I'm on a private plane and I'm doing this and I just raised $80 million. And yeah, but I'm dying inside. I'm popping Adderall every fucking day. My heart rate is a thousand. <laughs> yeah. I'm slowly killing myself. Like there's, there's so such a discrepancy out there that's happening. It's ridiculous. And I think it's just important to bring attention to that. Like when you are feeling alone, when you are feeling upset, when you are feeling like things aren't working, talk to somebody. You will be surprised at how much people are willing to actually be there for you and help you. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Vulnerability is power. It doesn't mean that you are weak. That's one thing that I really want people to walk away with is just be human. It's okay. It's okay. We're trained as children. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. But that's so wrong right like yeah. you have to let those emotions come up the goal is not to be happy all the time the goal is to be okay with whatever shows up within you That's so i just want to yeah want to want to put that out there and as far as people experiencing these things like in a one-on-one -on -one setting when i'm sitting with them the energy by itself is that's created i always i always make a joke that I'm like one of those people that even if I'm sitting in like an Uber, the guy starts telling me his life story. It's just <laughs> the way that I've always been like That's awesome, in that though. energy all of a sudden. Yeah, it's great. I, I really i am grateful for that ability, but people just open up to me and I do create that safe space, that safe environment. I always am willing to share my own faults and my own, 
you know, journey, my own failures for them to realize like, hi, I'm not invincible here. I'm also a human that goes through shit. Also, you know, it's, it's not like you're alone. So really helping them feel that way so that they're able to open up at a deeper level and share what needs to be shared. Um, you know, so on the one-on-one, that's what happens. In terms of them opening up to those around them, that really is not something I ever force. Okay. It's something people have to be prepared and ready for. And, and, you know, as you do this kind of work and as you do become more comfortable in your skin and you become more, uh, you know, more trusting of yourself, loving of yourself, you're okay with all parts of you and you're okay with anything that shows up and you don't see a need to pretend anymore because you're no longer judging yourself. And again, going back to everything being a projection, any type of fear of judgment from others is a judgment of yourself. So when you do the work to dissolve the judgments within yourself, you're not going to know what anyone else thinks because you're not judging yourself anymore. It's actually really good advice. It's interesting, right? <laughs> I, I That's the thing. Like One of the main reasons I wanted to have you on the show is because – you're brutally honest about this stuff, right? And you're right. Like, I, yeah. it's so fascinating to me. And just, I want to reiterate it because I think it's so important is you have these people that you think are super successful, but they like can't sleep. They wake up in the middle of the night. They're, they might be like drinking more or, or taking some sort mm-hmm. of prescription meds just to cope with everything. Mm-hmm. But in everybody mm-hmm. else's eyes, they're crazy successful. But they feel mm-hmm. like they're drowning, right? In whatever that is. Right. And it, it's okay to feel like that. And failure doesn't have to be such a negative uh, term, right? Like you yeah. can learn more from either watching the company you work for fail or you fail or both. But it's the people that kind of pick themselves back up, figure it out. And keep going and, and work through this stuff, right? Or, or what advice do you kind of give people? Because we're kind of coming to the end of the show. Sure. You know, it's resilience and persistence um, more than anything else. Self-awareness is number one. Okay. Like, really, you want to get to a place where you know yourself. How many people are operating at such an unconscious level in life and they don't even really know themselves? They don't know to what extent they uh, feel inspired and what their purpose is and all that. So do the work to get to know who you are at an unwavering level. And and resilience and persistence are the two other things. Like you have to understand that things don't happen overnight. Yeah. Everything is a process. Everything is a process, right? It, it, it takes time. There are no overnight success stories. These yeah. are just the things that are glorified in the media. And again, social media, right? So yeah. Just understanding that it takes it takes time, it takes work, putting aside that that sense of urgency, putting aside that sense of it has to show up now. That's just going to result in you chasing something and whatever you chase chases you. So take the power back. Don't be attached to something outside of you and depend on that to give you the power. The power comes from within you. When you experience that, everything else falls into place. And you know, being resilient, there's this really great Chinese proverb, fall okay. seven times, stand up eight. Mm-hmm. That is what it takes to be, if we're just talking about entrepreneurs in specific, to be a successful entrepreneur, but even as a human being, to be a happy and fulfilled human being, you're going to get hit in the face a million times in life. Yep. Are you going to allow it to keep you down? Are you going to allow situations to make you into a victim or are you going to look at it and go, yeah, that happened. I took my power back. I take responsibility. I take accountability and I'm going to continue to show up. I'm not going to let that one experience define me. I am defining it and come back from an empowered stance and start taking one step at a time, pushing forward and seeing the results show up in your face over time. There's no reason to allow failure to take you down. There's no reason to allow external circumstances to dictate who you are. The truth is you are a divine being having a human experience and you are here to be able to live a fulfilling life. So take that responsibility for yourself. It is absolutely your responsibility to make your life one that is powerful and fulfilled for yourself. It's nobody else and it's nobody else's fault. So do the work and enjoy this beautiful life. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I, I think that's actually really good advice. And, and I love the brutal honesty with that, right? Uh, but but we are coming to the end of the show. So let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about you and uh, Coexcel. Yeah, totally. So you can find me actively on Instagram at Cam S. Kashani. And my website is coexcel.com. That's C O A C C E L. And if anybody's interested in learning more about what we do, you can schedule a meeting with me on the website and we can talk more about what you're doing and see if there's a fit. Perfect, Cam. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time of your day to be on the show and I look forward to keeping in touch with you and have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.